Welcome back, Fuck off. Bungy. Two cookies and milk. You episode can't read any flame. Episode ninety six. I'm your host William. Welcome to Cookies and Milk episode ninety six. I'm your host Ben. Um, today's cookies are these Dunkaroo sticks and a slab of chocolate. Uh huh. Just That's a, just a Hershey kiss right there, but we cut off the top of it, so it's just a disc. Yeah. Throw that into kiss. someone's. Hmm. Hmm. Elaborate. <laughs> like a disc made out of a kiss. Anyway, uh, today's topic was tempo and video games, so like, what the fuck are you talking about? A kissed. That has been episode 96. <laughs> you guys what are, are we just editing right there? <laughs> We're skipping 97, 98, 99. I don't deserve them. <laughs> <laughs> Not after kiss. Not after that, I do deserve 100, though you can't take that from me. Wait. <laughs> oh. Uh, I almost spilled my <laughs> milk. All over my shirt. So, I recently kickstarted. I've been kickstarting some stuff recently. Oh no, Ben! Uh, not re- not recently, like last year. Uh, and I kickstarted a game called Nilo. Uh, and Nilo is a third-person shooter type deal uh, where you have four floating guns around you. It's some like post-apocalyptic Earth. Um, and you are this kind of super enhanced soldier, uh, and you have four guns, and you can, like, speed, you can run real fast and jump and stuff, and it's cool as fuck, and you can, like, top-down shoot, and you can melee and stuff, and you, like, have these cool powers. The alpha build got released end of last year, um, and it got released, so, and I got a computer that can play video games, uh, recently. And by play video games, I mean I saw to turn it on to the lowest settings. Really? Uh, my computer is not made for games. Uh, if I wanted a gaming computer, I would have bought a gaming computer, but I don't well, want a gaming computer. That's fair. I want a computer that can... Make videos. Make videos. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, this isn't even... Maybe like a more legitimate game uh, could run consistently. That one that's in the alpha build. Of course. Of a Kickstarter game. Also, second thing, this game is fast. Like, it was weird. It wasn't fast enough to give me motion sickness, but once you get out there, it's so fast. Ooh. Like, I have never seen a game go from 0 to 100 as much as Nilo did. And it... It's an alpha, so it's currently a little bit choppy. Yeah. But from what I played of it, I was really impressed. Okay, so I'm going to bring something up. Sure. I think there's a big weakness with games like that. That go from 0 to 100 right at the gate. Yeah. I think there's a way to do it. Okay. I think there's very little time to establish a concrete story that lasts for the player. And that's not always necessary. Yeah. For a game to do. But if anyone ever wants to be like, Oh, I'm going to throw you in immediately without any story. But then I want to build a story. That's where you screw up. Because you're already moving too fast to care about the story. If the gameplay is good enough. Did you play Prototype? No. So, don't they do that? They start you, in the, they start you with the strongest abilities... Max power, and then they take it all away. That's the kind of game Prototype is? This happens in several games, I feel like, but Prototype is the one that always comes to my mind. Because of how annoying it is. Yeah? Number one, I didn't beat Prototype. Mm. My disc was fucked up, and oh. I couldn't... It, like, lagged a lot. So that's on my list of games that I'm actually not going to ever beat. Because huh. I don't care enough. That's fair. That's rare. I, can, I know why games do this. I know why they make you the strongest from the very beginning. Because it gives you a goal to work up to. But it is a risky business. Uh, and I guess it's not that risky nowadays. Uh, I gotta imagine... Can you imagine when you were like renting games? Like uh, way back when, when like Blockbuster and Hollywood Video existed? Yes. If you bought a game that sets you that high up so fast and then brought you all the way down. And then you had to return the game. 
Yeah, and then your week came up and you'd be like, I don't really wanna anymore. I already had the most fun. I'm not gonna hold on to this for another week to build myself back up that high. Yeah. I guess it's not, like, at this point in life, what are you going to do? you going to not play it? you going to not go all the way up? Yeah. It just creates, like, a bad experience to all of a sudden be like, oh, no, I'm shit. God of War always does that. Yeah. Not God of War new, but God of War 2 starts you as the god, but then he takes it all away. God of War 3, you lose it when you fall into Hades. I was going to say, there's a difference, I think... Those games are fine about it, though. Yeah. Because even when you're bad, you don't feel like you're bad. Right, because Kratos is... Ha- Kratos is handled very well. Right. Because he's out there killing it. Yeah. Nilo does it in a different way, though. You start... Not great. Like, you're base-level Nilo. Uh, and... You... Oh, there's a top-down feature. Which I was like, thank God... Because when you're going that fast, you can't see the fucking enemies. <laughs> I didn't know where they were. I was taking hits, and I was like, why am I taking hits? Please, God. I'm dashing as much as I can dash. There's, like, a stamina bar. There's so many bars. And I was just like, I, is there, like, a way to... S- there's a, there's a aim feature where the game slows down so you can, like, line up shots. And I was like, thank God. But it doesn't last. It's got a bar that depletes. And oh, I was like, God damn it. I can understand that it depletes, but, like... If you need it, you just always need it. Yeah. Like, the guns... I'm literally there, I'm mashing the melee, I'm mashing the guns button, and I'm like, am I killing enemies? Enemies can teleport? Every enemy can teleport. Why did, Why can they teleport? Nilo doesn't sound fun. I'm, Nilo does not sound fun by how you're explaining it. So, the thing is, it did leave a bad taste in my mouth. Oh. Uh, and I mean, that's why I'm Talking saying about it like this. Yeah. Okay. The game's in... Alpha build though, and there's a lot of potential there for it. Uh, I got, I didn't get, I got to a point where enemies were just literally like two shotting me, and I didn't see what was hitting me. I would just be next to them and be dead. Mm. And I was like, this is probably some shit that's got to get fixed. Also, second thing, there's like a crafting system, uh, and you want me to check out of a game real quick? Crafting system. Wait, 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 wait. No game, mm-hmm. Nilo. Mm-hmm. You can't be fast paced and have a crafting system. You can have a crafting system. I love a cra- I love me a good craft. But you can't have a fast tempo and a crafting system. Yeah. Like So a game's tempo should be like driving a car. Yes. The last thing you want to do is slam on the brakes. As when you're going 70. Yeah, when you're going 70. If you're going 25, you can you can you can break. Mm-hmm. You can break as much as you want, and you'll get to your destination, and you'll get to see the sights. Mm-hmm. Game is like a car. Car is like a game. Mm. Breaking it down. I'll get the most bonus points <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> I go the fastest. I get the highest score. <laughs> but if I go the slowest, I'll do. I'll I'll see the sights, and I'm on the freeway right now. <laughs> I, that's my that's my uh, that's my ideal when I'm going on the Autobot <laughs> with no speed limit. There's no speed limit, which means you can go as slow as you want. <gasps> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Should that be the episode title? As slow as you want. Yeah, you can go as slow as you want. <laughs> um. So I wish there was. I wish I could make longer titles. <laughs> I'm not. I'm so bad at putting concise titles. For, like, the episode, like, one-word hooks. I'm so... I'd much rather, like, a five-word hook. Yeah. Or something like a, like a long sentence that hooks you in that tells a story. Yeah. It's... No speed nice. limit means you can go as slow as you want is my ideal title for Thanks, this episode. Thanks, Autobahn. <laughs> Thanks, Autobahn might be the correct title. Yeah. But can either of us spell Autobahn? A U Not now. O the viewers will B-A-A-N. find out. B-A-A-N. I guess we were wrong. <laughs> anyway. No, but... So, you've talked about fast game tempo. Let's talk about slow game tempo. Oh, well, I'm on that note. Um, God of War does it all the time. It was my least favorite thing about God of War. Uh, it's my least favorite thing currently about Darksiders. Um, I dislike when people pad their games out. Even if you came out to make a puzzle game. 
Yeah. I hadn't come out to play a puzzle game. <laughs> I hadn't by God of War 1, 2, 3, Ghost of Sparta, and Chains of Olympus Let me to tell play you a this. puzzle game. Let me tell you this. No puzzles in Quick puzzles. Quick pu- Easy puzzles. Quick puzzles. Not easy puzzles. Fuck! Oh, there's I don't want to think! There are quick puzzles. <laughs> uh, more based on... Mm. Quick puzzles. <laughs> God. Uh, but... There's a stat system in God of War. The new one. Yeah. Well, how's it going? Ooh, is that hair? Yes. Oh no, Ben. Anyway, there's a stat system in God of War uh, 4, and it is so fun to equip different things, and you can see all the green arrows light up, uh, or and like you can... It's absolutely... Uh, you can be any build you want at any time. You just gotta build to it. And you can take those equipment pieces off and put different equipment pieces on... Uh, you're always able to get new pieces of equipment. And there's an equipped piece that lets you uh, pass the puzzles. Excuse me? No, there's not. It's called your son. <laughs> Boy, I knew this puzzle. Um, but, so, you start the game out, normal axe, it's, it looks powerful. But as you go on, it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger... And your boy, which starts the game, weak little boy. Strong. Wait. It's weaker and weaker and weaker. Huh. You see him grow old. Your axe is eating him. <laughs> oh no, that's not how that works. Um, but you see him do more intense things, like knock an enemy down, or uh, shoot faster. Or stab an enemy in the heart. Sometimes. Rubble's here. Rubble's here to stab me in the heart. He says it feels good to kill. <laughs> That's Rubble and the boy at the same time. Rubble, are you the boy? Let's hear it for the boy. He just put all of his cat hair in your in your milk. <laughs> so I won't get into too much detail with God of War 4, but like, God, fucking play it, dude. It's so good. Dad's still playing it. Got it. Or he's trying to. He plays it for a bit and then gives up. Um, what kind of tempo do you think Fallout 76 will have? God, stop! <laughs> um, I'm consistently worried about Fallout 76, but I am going to... Would you fucking leave my milk alone? He is leaving it alone. He doesn't care about it. He just keeps whipping his tail over it. Okay, good. I thought this wasn't recording for a second. Ben, go feed Rubble. Oh no, Ben's drinking milk. There was definitely not that much milk in there. Sorry, the Dunkaroos or whatever congealed into it. Yeah. Ruined the milk drink experience. Oh yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> 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 As you were, I hated it. Ugh. But yeah, our mother got us the Dunkaroos. So. Grab the scissors right next to you, bud. Try to go beyond, dude. We're watching My Hero Academia with our family. It's good. Yeah, we just got to the end of season one. And I mean, we both, uh, we're both reading the manga so it's not as though we're behind or anything, but man, seeing it animated really is a whole other game. I watched the fights from season one and two so much. Okay, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was holding back. I didn't. I've seen uh, the fight is really uh, like all the gift sets I've seen of the fight are just the fight. Yeah, but it's great. Yeah. Um, you say run is so good. Also, the music, just the music direction, great. So, what was I just talking about? Fallout 76. Oh, yeah. I'm worried about the griefing system consistently. Well, they did say... They talked about it. I'm just... I worry it won't be enough. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, 
it's like tough to imagine. It's tough to. Uh, it's tough for a company like Bethesda to figure out just how cruel their community could be. Also, what's the point of like limiting the griefing system if you can get access to nukes? So you know you can move your camp. So the thing is, your camp is tied to a little box. Oh, so you fast travel to your camp, you pick up the box, and you leave. <laughs> As it's being nuked. As you're seeing the nuke come down oh, on you. Oh, no, 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 I no, mean, It'd be fun to make a bunker that oh. could survive a fallout. Yeah, I hope they do that. Nuke. Like, oh, yeah, like a vault of your own. Yeah. Because you can make a vault in, uh, or you can, yeah, you can build out a vault in, uh, in four. Yeah, there's a DLC that lets you do that. Yeah. I never looked at it at all. Uh, a tempo defined by player characters is gonna, or, yeah, by... A whole community? By a whole community, is gonna be weird. I don't think we've really ever seen anything like it. Fallout 76? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I can't think of... So, I can, the only thing I can think of it, I can liken it to, is a Minecraft... Rage. What? What? <laughs> Yeah, like a Minecraft world that everybody gets spawned. Like a Minecraft community that everyone gets spawned in, but that 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 either has heavy regulation or it's anarchy. Yeah, and the heavy regulation is like part of me want part of me always wanted to be a part of a community like that, where I could like make a little Minecraft apartment. Yeah, and live there, and then like have uh, emeralds to trade with other players. I think that would have been really fun. That is my ideal Minecraft. Yeah, just a community. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I want a Minecraft where I can explore like a player-created world. Yeah. Like, uh, where they have like fallen buildings, like they've vined up and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, but we've never had a game quite like Fallout seventy six, where you can just build an encampment. I wish there were NPCs. I wish there were NPCs, yeah. It seems surreal to me that there won't be NPCs. Because it's only 20 years after the bombs fell? Yeah, there should be, like, a ghoul or two or something. Yeah, well, there are aggressive ghouls. I want people ghouls. Yeah. Also, robots I can talk to. Like, that's not a lot. Yeah, guys. they have that. They have. They do have that? Yeah. That's not... That's NPCs, though. They're not counting them as NPCs. Weird. They're counting... Uh, they, so they have holotapes and robots that give out quests. And players can give out quests. Right, we can give each other quests. Yeah. We can give out quests, because we're going to be the shop. Yeah. You think everybody is going to be want to be the shop? I think we're the only ones that are going to want to be the shop. That can't be right. We're going to get into the 30-some people, and uh, me, you, and Mitchell are going to bunker down and be like, all right, we're going to set up our little mall here. Come on by if you want some stuff. Come and on. And be like, we're the mall. What? We're the, over here. You, we gotta I, kill him. <laughs> I have a quest for you. Uh, if you we have a quest for you. We have a quest for you. You do the stuff. We uh, sell the bullets. <laughs> oh. No. We sell the bullets. No. <laughs> just oh, a fine traveler. Would you come to San Oh, I'm just collecting I'm, things for my shop. I'm, yes, I'm actually a traveling salesman of myself. <laughs> Insane. Hmm. Just three camps of ten people. Yeah. <laughs> Where's here? Fine crafts. <laughs> no, fine where's here? <laughs> we have divided ourselves into three separate factions, though we're no longer playing together. Yeah. Oh, it's just, I'm one faction, you're yeah. the other. I was going to say, we've all gathered the other 30 people in the thing under our banner. And then we start griefing. We start <laughs> griefing. Hey. We all launch nukes at once. <laughs> we're all gathering our stuff. We bought. We have too much stuff to. We're we also can't. in one like ten by ten area. That's where we set up. We tried to push as hard as we could on the boundaries of the of the of the of yeah. the camp system. Someone launches and he's like, "Oh shit! Oh, who did it? You did? I didn't do it." <laughs> you find you find me stealing your stuff while you're backing up. <laughs> I kill you and then the nuke hits us. Uh, the hubris of man. I can't wait to see the economy. You think it'll be a? An, you think there will be one? Oh yeah, for sure. We'll define Ooh. it. We will in our mall. <laughs> Ooh, that'll be fun. Oh, that's gonna be so fun. Hopefully. And then think of it—all the updates that will come. Oh, the yeah. 
What time are we at? That's a good question. 20 minutes. Hmm. So... I'm trying to think. Um, what's one of the best tempos you've ever had in a game? Like, what's a game that you played that you felt built you up? I don't... Oh, like, built me up at a good pace? Yeah. I feel like... Binary Domain. I know. I just watched Funhouse play through it again, and it got me thinking. Just like, I feel like the... Things build as time goes on. Like, yeah. you start with one party member... And you just, you start to get more and more and more, and your relationship with them builds more and more and more, and you're, like, getting better commands to issue, uh, you're getting better weapons, uh, the enemies are getting harder, it just makes sense, and it's fun, it's a fun game. Um, Mass Effect has a strange tempo. Mass Effect 1 is very fast-paced. You're chasing someone. Uh, that's interesting. You're chasing someone who is moving, right? That is normally how you chase people. Well, well, you're okay. You're searching for someone who is moving. Um, uh, they are well set up, well fortified. But you can still get them on the run. Well, you're going to Saren, right? Yeah, I'm talking about Saren. Yes. Yes. He has. He, well, he has a lot of like things going on. Yeah, but don't you still think he's a good guy? Saren? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I didn't say he was a bad guy. You were describing it like that, chasing a guy who's well fortified. You're fighting against someone. Who thinks they are in the right? Then you go to Mass Effect Two. Everything's taken away from you. Starting back from the ground up. You are no longer. Oh no! Wait, that's what? That's three. Yeah, you're no longer. You oh, you think the reboot? What happens in three then? More of it. Oh yeah. The second one. I think that'd be fun. The two ends while you're still working on it. Well, 2 ends in the middle of the Reaper War, but then 3 would be a very condensed game. Yes. But... Also, no, I don't think anybody would really enjoy that. Absolutely not. Um, God, this really well fell away from me. But in 2, uh, it's a quiet period. Like... You're rebuilding. You're rebuilding... Uh, the, the threat level isn't that bad. Like, the Reapers aren't here yet. You're just dealing with, like, you're tying up a loose end. Uh, so, and you have time to build up your relationships, your ship, your gear, all that. Explore, you can explore most of the galaxy in Mass Effect 2. I feel. Mass Effect 3, you're being chased. Uh... And it's much it's much more fast paced than the other games, and you can really see, you can feel the tempo. You can feel how it how the mood of the game shifts uh, on the Citadel. Uh, when you first start the game, you get to the Citadel. Things are okay. People are just going about their business. Things don't look too bad. Some a few more people are here than normal, but things are a lot more quiet. Uh, halfway through, uh, a lot more refugees are now there. Then it gets attacked by Cerberus. And then things look a lot worse after that. Like, people... There are crowds of people in the lower bays. Uh, shattered glass is still everywhere. The main war that you buy and have nice moments with your crew is still on fire in some places, but you're still talking to Liara about her, her dad, Asari, or uh, you're still talking to Tally about uh, a thing that happened in Mass Effect 1, but it's just 
everyone is scared. And it's so... Intr it's so interesting to see. Oh. I just had a thought. Oh, the quiet areas in Mass Effect 3. Those are the ones where you're indoctrinated? No, no, no. I'm not saying... I'm not talking about Shepard's Dreams. Yeah. I'm just talking about quiet spots. Like, on the Citadel. Yeah, the place where it's dead silent. On the Normandy. Things you don't get to be around a lot. Those are the places where... I think that's where it's scariest. Can't you hear the background noise if you listen hard enough? Sometimes you can... I feel like you'd hear the, you'd hear the background noise if you listen hard enough. But, yeah, it's just sort of uh, tucked away in a corner. Yeah, just like... Alone. A bit of... Not peace. No, definitely but not peace. Calm? Calm. It's something you should not feel when Reapers are invading. Yeah. Um, it's an unwelcome calm. Oh, yep. Yeah, it's the... An I know. Unwelcome calm. Uh, it just, it's the thing that makes you... I'll still... I'll say this uh, for as long as I live. The Dead Reaper in Mass Effect 2 is the scariest thing. Because, no. It still indoctrinates people. In a different way. It just makes them go insane. It doesn't bend them to their will or anything. <sighs> just a dead giant right next to a dwarf star. Yeah, that's not good. It's, that's uh, a bad thing in space. Yeah, it, it's a bad thing in space. That's Mass a bad thing anywhere. Mass Effect 2, that's a bad thing that's in space. That's a bad thing in space. That's Mass Effect. That's a bad thing in space. Oh, God. I don't think uh, Mass Effect Andromeda couldn't capture that. Because it didn't have the Reapers. It didn't have the Reapers. I mean, that's Not fine. every game didn't have the Reapers, but... That's fine. The Reapers were a big thing in my last fight. Oh, they were so big. And they Literally. were... Oh! The fucking one of the dudes in Mass Effect and Drown, a small, people-sized. The Ket? I don't fucking That's what that. kills me. Uh, is, like, Mass Effect and Drown could have been good... If, it, just, if the cat were a little bit bigger. It, they should be huge! <laughs> no, I mean, if... If Mass Effect 3 wasn't so big, you know? Yes. I mean, like, Mass Effect Andromeda is... You got the cat, you got the Angara. Those are the two new things. And then empty planets. Yeah. Bunch of nothing. And I mean, Mass Effect 1 had that. But I mean... At the end of the day, there's that's something. That's 2006. Yeah, there's also something in Mass Effect 1. There's yeah. something building. Yeah. Mass Effect Andromeda is just like... You you play the game, and then all that's playing through your mind is Mass Effect Andromeda has been discontinued. <laughs> it's like, oh. But there's no quiet spaces in Andromeda. Because what are you quiet from? Exactly. Uh, and, and I mean, that's sort of the thing, is that Mass Effect 3 is uh, such a good ending to a series. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, and what it, when you close up something like that, what do you do? You're exactly. telling a different story somewhere else. You have to. And that's not easy. Especially when you've built up three games of... Especially when you're pushing... Especially when you're throwing Andromeda between two company, two, two workstations yeah. and they're not coinciding. And you're scrapping an entire procedurally generated world at the very last second. <laughs> then six months. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. What else... My best pacing <gasps> and te Yeah? Do you have something to say? Well, I, was wanted, to I wanted to talk about Dragon Age, but okay. My best <laughs> time going video games. Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Really? So, when talking about pacing in games, I feel like you have to mention a game's replayability. That's very... That's absolutely true. When your tempo is just a little bit off, even if the beginning, if it's unnoticeable... The second time through, it's going to be a lot more noticeable. Borderlands 2's opening is so goddamn long. Yes. Like, in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, they shifted when you get your special two levels down. And it feels so much better. Which doesn't sound like that huge a difference, but it 
absolutely is. Yes. Like, because you get it, and you're still... You're on the moon base when you get it, right? Like, it's... I don't think you're on the moon base. I think you, you might be leaving the moon base exactly when you get it. Mm, I think or you so. get it when you level up. You I get think to the when you get to Knuckle, to Fire Knuckle. Yeah, but he's on the moon base. Yes. Yeah. When you get to when you get on a Hyper when you're about to leave Hyperion and you fight Fire Knuckle, I think yeah, you get it. There. That's about when you get your special. So, uh, but you get it, and things are exploding around you. The pace is good. It sets you up to everything that's happening, and you just get to start going. And uh, then you get on the moon, and then then things slow down. There's a, bit. a slow down part, but it ha- there has to be. But the point is that it starts you off on the roller coaster, and then there's a dip. But the dip doesn't feel as bad because it hasn't been a dip the whole time. You know what they should have done? Borderlands Two, that opening, skippable. Let us no, let us play it. The train. No, wait a minute. Then we're just in. Then we're just in. Uh, pro- prototype. No, 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 let us play in that, start building XP there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Start us off at normal, I don't mean, I definitely don't mean start us has how good that was, but playing, uh, letting us see, uh, start it as, like, the four vault hunters, uh, on the train, and then they see the welcome to your doom, and then it starts. Yeah. Uh. There's a certain charm to uh, Borderlands 2 opening, showing you what everybody's capable of, and then knocking you down, and then you waking up in the... Like, for all intents and purposes, I do like that that's where the game starts. Yeah. I like that it opens up a claptrap finding your corpse. Um, like a fall in New Vegas of itself. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the rest of it. Yeah, of course. Fighting the bully mongs is sort of boring. Hammerlock is fun and everything, but every part of the game that happens in that area is pretty slow. Yeah, what kills me is that uh, Liarsburg should not be quiet. Yeah, I want Liarsburg should not have been quiet. If God, it should have been a more active area. Yeah, Liarsburg could have been so much better if it wasn't just Hammerlock and Claptrap. Yeah, if it was a full little hub. I would have felt a lot better about the whole thing. Because if it had opened up then, that would have been a lot better. Yeah. You go. You have to go f- for a while until you find, like, a actual world, little town area. And then that's the only little town area. Yeah. Or little, no, there's not. No, there's other places. Yeah, there's a couple. But those ones are sort of... There's, like, one person in each of those places that's really worth talking about. I like... To. So the thing that kills me about Overlook is that I wish it could have been populated. Yeah. But what I I do like the Shamrock area. Oh yeah. Because it's populated. I like populated areas. Yeah. It's always it's fun in Borderlands walking into an area that there's a lot of people into. Which is why Borderlands One is the worst. Because there's no one. Oh Borderlands One just feels bad. Like it's always slow. Man, it's amazing that they embezzled funds into that game because it looks like shit. Yeah. You know recently they apparently fixed the uh, enemy AI with one letter? What? Yeah, in oh not in Borderlands, but in uh, Aliens Colonial Marines. Really? Yeah, somebody went into the code, changed one letter, and like the AI is like functional now. Oh my god. Yeah. Is um, it a good game? Probably not. Probably not. But like I it's just like a funny story. I don't really care. Um but Borderlands the pre sequel is great at it. Like I can go through Borderlands the pre sequel we played through that three times, right? Three times, yes. Uh, and I don't think I ever really felt myself getting tired of it. Uh, the intro, at least. Like, the dips were still dips, but when you play a game three times through, you're going to just start finding those dips. Well, yeah, the intro to the pre-sequel gives you enough stuff to uh, enjoy coming back to it. Also, it's not fair to the game that I started as Claptrap the first time, so getting other people's skill trees was not as good. I can see that. Like, uh, playing as Nisha afterwards was just sort of, uh... Just gunplay. Yeah. It is... Do you remember the final boss with Nisha, though? Uh, with Nisha, though? What'd you do? Uh, so, like, I was using this revolver the whole time, because she's got perks about revolvers. Yeah. We're recording? Yeah, we are. Isabel. Uh... You're gonna have to take that up to her? No, she didn't know where it was, but it was it, it had been by me the whole time. Of course. So I was just fidgeting with it. 
Um, We're at 34 minutes. 35 so minutes. She's got a revolver skeletry. Uh, I believe it was like a revolver skeletry. She likes pistols, most of all. Yes. Because if you have a pistol out and you go into her thing, she can dual wield pistols. So I've been using a revolver the whole time, and then we got to the final boss, and then he dropped a gun that was just like better than my revolver, mm -hmm. and it was like full fire, like fully automatic, and I was like, oh, huh. And just when you, berserker. And when you go into Nisha's ability, she fires like three times as fast, and auto-aims. So I picked up this gun with like 40 shots in it, and activated my special and cleaved through a quarter of its health. Oh. And then I... And who was I, Athena? Yeah. Oh, then, my God. You should get your special back quick, because it's not the best. Unless you have that. exactly that. And then I did it again, and it was just... I remember when I was playing Lady Hammerlock, and I had a legendary cryo gun drop yeah, for me? Start... Don't you start with it? No, you start with something else. I start with a rare gun. And money, also. And money. But... Then I got another one to drop. Yeah. Another legendary cryo gun. I'm just like, this is the best. Yeah. Honestly. Honestly? One of my favorite things. Two of my favorite characters are in uh, the pre-sequel, and it's Lady Hammerlock and Wilhelm. The fact that the pre-sequel didn't just get, like, one more DLC is so sad forever. Yeah, if it had one more DLC, that would have made it so much more uh, fun to play through again. Don't get me wrong, still a 9 out of 10. Absolutely. I, it's so good. It's just so bad that we don't, there's not, there's like, it's like a quarter of Borderlands 2. Yeah, and that's, it does kill me, because going through Borderlands 2, holy shit. What a goddamn slog. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, still like a 9 out of 10. Still an enjoyable slog, but it's still a slog. Like, I mean, also the fifth time through it, we've been through this song and dance before. Yeah. Uh, some of the worst tempos I've ever played? Pokemon games. Yeah. Like, I... The older I grow, the more I'm like, I just don't like Pokemon games. And don't get me wrong, I like... There's like a sweet spot in Pokemon games that I like. Like, once I get my team together and I'm, like, really taking down, like, the... I'm going through the Elite Four, I'm, like, pushing it to it, then I like it. And when I'm just, like, playing on Pokemon Showdown and just, like, assembling a team yeah. and, like, parting strategies and stuff, I'm like, this is sweet. But playing it? <laughs> Building up those teams manually? Like, grinding for stuff and having to interact with my rival? It's bad. It sucks. It's, and, like, I'm playing through Red again, and it's, oh, it's never, it's never been good. I, like, I gotta, I, I shouldn't play through Ruby again, because, like, I... You're scared? I'm scared. What if I don't like it? What if I hate it? I mean, I played through Alpha Ruby. Omega Ruby. Yeah. Uh, and that was fine, but that was, like, a time ago? Yeah, 2014. Yeah. Four years ago. Isn't yeah. that fun? There was a sweet spot there. Where I was, like, uh, still jamming on Pokemon games. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, tore through, uh, Y, tore through, uh, Omega Ruby, got to the post-game, did not do the post-game. Of Omega Ruby? Yeah. Yeah. She should have just had all her shit in one place. I don't want to ever have to follow somebody around the map. That's fair. Yeah, because if, in a Pokemon game, it's the worst. Just do it. Because, just... very... Uh, very rarely are you able to go back to an NPC and figure out where you're supposed to go. Yeah, and that's the part that got me is that I set it down for a second, and I was like, alright, I'm gonna come back. Where the fuck was I supposed to go? Yeah. Fucking, I don't know, Jesus Christ. I'm just gonna play with my Makuhita. Yeah, I'm just gonna not do that. <laughs> Click. I'm trying to think of bad tempo. Um, games I played recently that had bad tempo... I'm trying to think of other games. Monster Hunter. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Monster Hunter is the worst with tempo. Monster with tempo Hunter and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate made me not want to play Monster Hunter. So, Monster Hunter games should have a thing where it's like, have you played Monster Hunter before? You have? Alright, we'll search you at HR 3. <laughs> we don't need you to play through HR 1 to 2. Dude, because HR 1 is garbage setup time 
and HR2 is whatever. They should have an option to skip it, period. Just skip Monster Hunter? Yeah, I, if I could have my way, I would just skip it. They you, would, you have. Uh, I have a surprise for you. You have skipped Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter 3 was so poorly paced that I was just like, I don't want to do this. Like I, It was like, set up your mushrooms and oh your, my God. Fun, your fishing, and then go hunt a dozen jaggies. And, and then like, go online. And I was like, I don't... God, I don't want to. And it it's like, the... Okay, I'll say this about Monster Hunter 3 specifically. Fucking... Monster Hunter games, until Monster Hunter World, has, has they have screwed up so bad with HR. Because in order to get build HR, you need to do online quests. But story quests progress on their own. So, in this was up till Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And Monster Hunter Generations, too. Uh, the one that's like all the games. Yeah. Uh, in Monster Hunter Generations... I could have been at story HR eight, and I'd still be I'd still have HR one on my gamer card, and I'd have to play through Hunt Ten Jaggy five hundred times before I could get to actual HR eight. Jesus, not the Jaggy thing, yeah. but like I'd have to do all the quests I've already done, but just a bit harder because it's multiplayer. I have to find people online who are trying to do the same thing I am doing, and it's like, you shouldn't play with full maxed out gear. Uh, full, I never maxed out gear, because Monster Hunter is insane. Uh, but it's like, you should never play with, or, I saw somewhere where it's like, it's better to play with the gear that is made for HR1, uh, so you're not like, leaving people in the dust, and like, I spent so much time on this armor. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. It. I'm not unequipping this uh, this shit just to get worse shit. And Wait, then, so, like, you don't make people feel bad. I guess no. So you keep their 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 experience fun and and well paced. Oh, so you don't do what happened to me with Bloodborne. Yeah, which is where I people walked me through a level, and then by the time I got out of that level, I was like. Uh, this is too difficult for me, and I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I can understand that, but in the same vein, no. Yeah? It's the driving a car thing. Um, and Monster Hunter puts the brakes on so much, so often. So, here's, the f here's, a, fu here's a sad thing that happened to me. The thing that ruined Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for me. I did so much online multiplayer because the story mode was insufferable. Oh, yeah, it's bad. So I pushed so hard in story mode, I got, a, like, HR5. I got a cool fire sword and shield. I came back to story mode, and have, did you get to the Azeroth? Which is a bear. No, uh, maybe. Which is a blue bear. In the ice area? No, that's yeah. Lagombi. Uh, I have no fucking uh, No, he's just a blue bear on Desert Island. Sure. I got to him... And he is weak to fire. And I fucking annihilated him. And I felt so bad. Because he was supposed to be an early game boss that shows you uh, what a hunt can be. What a hunt should be. And because I had access to the online, and I pushed so hard because they made the story mode bad, I just fucking killed a bear... Like, and it was such an unfair fight. You slaughtered it. I slaughtered a bear, and he was scared of me. Yeah. And I felt terrible about it. Yeah, there's something uh, almost sad about walking into a monster in a fight and, and hurting them so bad that they're immediately limping. Yeah. You're the monster. You're absolutely the monster. Uh, and so that's the sort of thing that killed me about Monster Hunter, was that, oh my god, I hate... I've said it before, I'll say it again, I hate grinding in video games so much. I don't understand... People will say forever that it's like, oh, this and this is like, um... What's the word? Fluff? Like, it gives the game uh, imaginary longevity or something? What's the... There's like an exact word I'm looking for. Uh, imaginary depth? Uh, imaginary length? Something like that. Uh fake length? Some, it's some combination of those kind of words, and I'm gonna remember and be pissed. But then a game like that comes out, and it's just like, that's fine. 
We don't care. And it's like, what are you fucking talking? That's what that is! Yeah. That's the kind of shit that we hate. In God of War, when it gets to the puzzles, everybody can agree we hate the puzzles. But when Monster Hunter comes out and it's like, you have to fight this monster 200 times to get the better version of the slants, to have you fight a monster better, that's acceptable? That's fine? When any RPG exists and people criticize it because it follows the same bullshit that RPGs do, or, oh, if you fucking gotta grind at it in order to beat this boss correctly, when fucking Persona exists and does all that shit off the table, the pacing is ruined for me. I can't... The, the grinding has to be fun, and there's a certain time when it's not fun anymore. Yeah. And for some games, that happens way earlier in. So, there's a thing about Monster Hunter World. The combat is so much better. So, there are Elder Dragons. Dragons you cannot capture. Monsters monsters you cannot capture. Yeah, you have to kill them. Uh, and there's this one called the Teostra. This big lion, red, uh, has wings, all that, all that. Uh, and I have these, and for the first time in any Monster Hunter game... Monster Hunter was this year, right? Yes. Shit. Early this year. Yeah. Uh, and I, I got these two sword, these two hatchets, right? Uh, these, the dual swords that make you go super fast. And I used them for, like, the first time ever. And they are water, which the toaster is weak to. Grinding Teostra is so fun because when I get into the motions of just carving him up and uh, with the swords, it's just such a good feeling. Because Monster Hunter World, fixed combat. Monster Hunter World, it's not even combat that was bad for me. Number one, Monster Hunter World looks incredible. It does. Like, it's everything I've seen fun. about it looks, like, amazing. And if I was buying games this year... You would have bought it. I probably would have bought it. Uh, but, like... Hey, dude. Monster Hunter World 2, when that comes out. Uh, God. I don't know if I can. Okay, that's Because uh, Gunland stuff... The Gunlands felt so good to me. Yeah? Monster Hunter 3, using the Gunlands, felt so satisfying. Because it's such a big payoff. Because it's such a big payoff. And, I mean... And it all felt good. But it was so disheartening to beat a monster and then just, like... Not get anything for it, like yeah. Not have enough next time. Not have enough materials to uh, forge a gun lance. Yeah, or the material didn't drop, and I'm like, so I'm not even moving forward. Yeah, like I'm um, getting better. Me, I'm getting better at it. Yes, but not, that's not, not, the not enough payoff. Yeah, there was a a pretty bad thing in Monster Hunter Four, um, where I was like, I want to build this ice charge blade. I need a material. I, I I hit a roadblock early. I need a material that is only dropped by an insect queen that is built like a tank. Uh, I killed her so much, and she summons little monsters that you fight in the beginning of the game. I killed them so much just to kill her. Uh. They dropped once, and then I got the upgrade. And by the time I'd gotten the upgrade, I it was too weak for me. Oh, because you had just moved past it. I had moved past. I needed the next tier in the upgrade because I'd upgraded the uh, weapon to kill her <laughs> so much. And I'm like, it's not worth it now to equip or use the uh, good resource on. So I was like stuck in an impasse. You don't know what's a special kind of hell. Yeah, what? So, Monster Hunter 3. You had it. Mitchell had it. I think somebody else had it. I can't remember. Yes. Uh, and I I had it. So, I'm there. I had it for the Wii U. You all had it for the 3DS. Yes. So, like, and like we play it together. And I'm there, and I'm like, this is fun. It's a lot of fun hunting together with people. Yes. But after a certain amount of time, that was the only time I could have fun. But everybody else was playing it on their own. Yeah, that's the bad part. So, when I was stagnant and everybody else moved forward on Have their own... Have you already moved out of the house? No. No, no, not yet. 
I was still here when I was... Because I, I... I offered to play it with you. It was weird. It was a tough one to sit down and play. Yeah. Considering we have so many options for co-op games in the first place. That's fair. It's difficult to sit down and get in the Monster Hunter mode. Because, again, you were still moving forward on your own. Yeah. Regardless of whether or not I was moving. Not a fault to you, not a fault to anybody moving forward. I was just having fun with the game. Yeah. That's And that's fine, that's allowed. No one should be punished for that. That's just... It's unfortunate. Yeah. It's just an unfortunate way for that game to go. Uh, I'm trying to think. You want to call it there? Feels weird to call it there. Feed rubble again. <laughs> I mean... I feel bad whenever a multiplayer game comes out. Yeah. Uh, just put rubble right in front of the bowl. He doesn't want to go. Whenever a multiplayer game comes out, like, I really want to get Splatoon 2, but it's been out for so long, Yeah, I feel like if I jump in now, it's too late. It is on the, sort of, the... You can tell, like, the train is sort of fading. Yeah. The recent Splatfest they've had is pretty big. The DLC j came out, like, a month ago, actually? Like, a month ago. Seems cool, though. I watched the... The I'm, final boss I've fight been of the DLC. I've been seeing your reblogs. The like lesbians. Em. I like them. I just think they're neat. I saw that in your tag. The, I just think they're I just neat. I just think they're neat. I do just think they're neat. I saw the final boss. It's pretty good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> How are those two doing? Yeah. Are they having a they're good together? I see your I see what you're really looking at. Not the final boss. The final boss is cool though. I yeah. Sure. Uh, but I should get it because games on the Switch are hard to come by. That's true. But I did buy Stardew Valley, and I'm just so you're good well, for I'm a while. gone. You're good for a second. Is it co-op yet? I on this, I don't know. It should Probably be co-op soon. It should be. Oh, I don't do that with Isabel. That's my biggest fear with fall. I shouldn't talk about this. That's not. I was trying to find a safer place to end it on, like a more upbeat note. Hold on, tell me about the Fallout seventy six. So my biggest fear for Fallout seventy six is that we all get it, and we all get like in one session, and then like that's it. Yeah, that's the main thing I'm terrified about. Uh, we have to set up a day of the week. Oh. And I hate that. Oh. Just as much. Dude, I'm okay. Dude, dude, I'm just looking at Tuesday, Wednesday evening, and Sunday. Those are my free times. Because I got work from here, and then I got work here. This isn't necessarily work. <laughs> we get paid. Oh. Then, Tuesday, Wednesday are fine. Maybe, if I'm lucky, if there's no plans. Thursday... Right into the park course after work. Friday, adventures. Saturday, got a bit of uh, levity uh, early in the day. 2.30 hits, I'm right up there. <laughs> till 7. And then I'm back here for more games <laughs> with my family. Which is fine. I leave a social life. <laughs> it's, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> I live a social life on Monday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Hanging out with my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought about that recently. I was like, "Man, I'm I have like a good social life." <laughs> oh, two of your big social days are with family. Oh, <laughs> well, that's fine. That shouldn't be frowned upon. My schedule is gonna have to change when school hits again, though. Oh, school's gonna kill us. Yeah. Oh, probably gonna have to cool it with like Saturday nights if I had to guess. It's fine. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll manage. Yeah? This is a weird podcast discussion. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're gonna... Uh, gonna get it. Gonna make it work. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> if not with Mitchell, then we'll buy it on on PS4 and uh, make it work with Isabel. Oh, I know. Uh, no, we won't. 
No, he won't. We'll just get it for Xbox One, and his bell won't care. Yeah, we'll just play Overwatch. Keep playing Overwatch. Yeah. Oh, those are my Tuesday nights. Overwatch. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm booked solid. Sometimes like, I, I'm like, I haven't gone drafting in like three months. That's terrifying for you. Like, I I got just behind. I like did two Dominaria drafts, and then I did one where I pulled the Planeswalker, and then the foil Oath of the Planeswalker, and then the Oath of the Planeswalker normal, and I was like, cool. Okay. It's not going to get better than this. And then I went 201. I didn't even go undefeated. <laughs> oh, God. I got a draw in the last match. Probably going to win it. Anyway. Can't know for sure. That has been episode 96 of Cookies and Milk. I've been your host, William. I've been your host, Ben. The Dunkaroos were fine. They're fine. They get, they take milk uh, well. This is a long one. How long did it go? 55 minutes. Shit, we got into it. Yeah, we got into it. It was 20 minutes. It's, I thought we were going to get to 32. It's all muffled. <laughs> oh. No. Uh, okay. Uh, bye, guys.